and all, and the chance that it might be a while before I get to have another haircut, I took matters into my own hands. You'd have done the same. And I think that some of you already have. Oh well. Welcome, my human friends. I'm still your host, the multi-sighted mutant Funky M. And yeah, the Devil 43 virus has forced a lot of us muties undercover of late, which gave me the perfect opportunity to finish up watching Hollywood's mutant movies. Only today, we're talking about what the Big Red Disaster did next. Because some of you, it seems, took a shine to his antics. Ah well, might as well introduce it properly. Humans and mutants alike, I gives ya Deadpool 2. Released in 2018, though not on Valentine's Day this time, Deadpool 2 is, of course, another movie nominally about the merc with a mouth. Our protagonist must protect a teenage mutant villainous tearaway from a time-hopping assassin with a taste for vengeance. Along the way, we'll meet the luckiest mutant alive, another version of the Juggernaut, and Peter. Anyways, Rotten Tomatoes gave it 84% for what it's worth. So strap in folks for the time-twisting, fire-flinging rollercoaster ride that is... Deadpool 2. So we join the action as our merc with a mouth is looking to take out his latest mark. Only, first contact don't go entirely to plan. Though back at Shea Wilson, life with Vanessa is completely on track. It's their second anniversary! <laughs> Looks like they worked out the kinks from the end of the first movie, eh? <laughs> oh, but Deadpool's left the mark alive. Never a good move. <laughs> Listen to me, like I know anything about me and Merc at all. <laughs> and Vanessa gets the bullet. Dang. And bye bye to the mark. But yeah, nigh immortal, so a self pity suicide only leads to a dream sequence. And the pool wakes up in the X Mansion. So now, guess who's the newest X Man? Well, not the pool, he's only a trainee. Actually, it reminds me of my earliest days on the X-Men. Wade's first call is to a downtown orphanage. Where we meet Fire Fist. Deadpool intervenes. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. Ah, but this is the saddest part of the movie. Well, after killing Vanessa off. This is where Colossus cuts his losses. Yep. No more will Peter Rasputin try to find the good in our Deadpool. So it's off to the ice box. A mutant prison in the mountains. Now, I'm not a guy who likes to rant. And this platform certainly doesn't like your ranting. But I have to take issue with the fact of putting a 13-year-old kid in an adult prison. Especially a high-security one, where some of the worst mutant offenders are housed. This, this cannot end well. This can only end in disaster. Where Wade's cancer begins to do a number on him again. So this is the best time to meet another player in this madness. Cable. So yeah, Cable and Deadpool have a big ol' scrap, blow a hole in the wall of the icebox, tumble through it, and end up on the outside, leaving Fire Fist all alone. But weren't there stories of a monster in the basement? But the pool has a mission from his own personal goddess, and forms a team to save Fire Fist from the wrath of Cable. <laughs> X-Force, yeah. Lasts about five seconds. 
but only because of unusually strong winds. We'll skip the gruesome fates of Shatterstar, Zeitgeist, Bedlam, The Vanisher, and even poor Peter. Rest in power, sugar bear! It's lucky that Domino is so... well, lucky! Lucky enough to survive a round or two with Cable. But here's something, it's Fire Fist that saves himself! And frees the... monster... Juggernaut. Well now, it's Cable that needs to get Deadpool on side. Okay, so I'm gonna break it down for you here. In the unaltered timeline, Fire Fist kills the head honcho of the Essex House Orphanage, where he grew up, for generally being a jerk hole towards mutants. Only... our boy gets a taste for killing off of this, and starts to go a little hog wild. And as the years roll by, it's guys like Cable that try and stop him, which leads to an adult Fire Fist offing Cable's entire family. That ain't right. So this is what inspires Cable to travel back in time and off Fire Fist before he ever threatened Cable's family. <laughs> Easy option, eh? Lucky that the pool's got an alternate option. Try and get through to Russell before he becomes the villainous Fire Fist. So it's back to the orphanage for our big action climax. Fire Fist has a bone to pick with the head honcho. And Juggernaut with everybody else. But what's this? Colossus came through for our guy, and takes the fight to Juggy, while our Deadpool tries to find the Russell Collins in Fire Fist. But if Fire Fist is going to score his first kill tonight, Wade volunteers as tribute. But it's a hell of a thing, watching a man die. And so the family Wilson are reunited in the hero. Genuine high grade lead. Genuine high-grade lead. Yep, Cable stole that from Deadpool, who gave it to Vanessa for their anniversary, and it later became the last thing he could remember her by. Only... Cable used up his return charge so that he could plant that skee-ball token back on Deadpool exactly where the bullet that would have killed him would land. But aren't we forgetting someone? Dude, Pinder! But then again, this guy was one of those fire and brimstone anti-mutanters, so... Okay? Anyway, that was dead. Oh no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, we still got the The Stinger! That's it, yeah, I gotta talk about the Stinger! Yukio and Negasonic repair Cable's time slider. And Wade saves Vanessa. And Peter. Gotta love a happy ending. Anyway, that was Deadpool 2. And it might be kinda sweary and very gory, but I think that this movie deserves its spot on the Mutant Thon team. This movie, like Deadpool 1, is not for the young'uns. It's ridiculously gory, sweary, and deals with some pretty heavy themes. But then, that's what's so great about it. It's a ridiculously OTT send-up of action movies in the mutant verse. But it's also a great story about growing up, both literally, in the form of Russell Fire Fist Collins, and figuratively, in coping with death and mourning, even if the pool himself can't actually die. And once more, we have to give it up for Ryan Reynolds, whose Wade Wilson goes through so much in this movie. Death, pain, imprisonment, the consequences of your actions, and still manages to find his groove and pathos, and come out swinging against life. But this movie would be so much emptier without Julian Dennison's Fire Fist, a plus-sized tornado of teenage anxiety, unbridled pain-soaked bloodthirst, and the honesty of a young kid who just wanted to find a place to fit in. And while most of the rest of the cast, Zazy Beats' is Domino, Brianna Hildebrand's Negasonic, even Josh Brolin's Deuteragonist, that means other guy, Cable, only have so much to work with, but they do it well. Stefan Kapicic returns to voice Colossus, who goes through an evolution of his own by loosening up a little, especially in the action climax, Bliart. And we can't forget about Karan Sony's Dapinda, 
who gives us a terrifying vision of what Fire Fist could have been if Cable hadn't intervened. Now, while the movie flows quite smoothly from A to B, from the explosive intro to the flaming climax, and the signature style of our Deadpool quite heavily signposts a lot of the twists and turns, this movie doesn't run on its story, which is, by the way, quite touching in its own way, without being overly schmaltzy. Hell, Deadpool's comedically drawn out death scene diffuses the trauma of Fire Fist learning what death really looks like, although the action scenes are mostly forgettable, outside of the opening 9 to 5 montage, and the climax at the orphanage. And yes, there are a lot of hidden cameos for the eagle eyed. Not just Stan Lee, but also Brad Pitt as the Vanisher, Matt Damon and Alan Tudyk as a couple of hillbillies discussing the best way to wipe your backside, and Reynolds himself pulling secret double duty as the voice of the CGI juggernaut. And on that point, the CGI has at least not taken a downswing from the first movie, as Colossus features a little more heavily, and even gets an entire fight scene with the juggernaut. So is it a perfect movie? <laughs> is it Frick? The story's a bit simplistic. Revenge, grief, trying to forge a new life, save a kid from making a terrible mistake even if it means killing him, and some of the comedy bits run a little long in my opinion, and introducing all of these cool mutants of X-Force just to kill them off in quick succession does nothing for me. But hey, these are only small nitpicks, and I can easily overlook them in this great lads night superhero action comedy that's all about family. So thanks for watching guys, don't forget to check out the rest of the mutants on if you're looking for something else to watch. Well, you know, you could watch the movies themselves. They're pretty cool. Uh, begging links are below. Do all the YouTube stuff. Check out the Manix forums. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I'm your humble host, the multi-sided mutant Funky M. And I'll see you guys next time, when we finally get around to talking about the Dark Phoenix again. Till then, see you around, humans.